the questions. So many questions were leaked that uh, Robert Mueller, the special counsel who was investigating collusion, obstruction of justice, all of the above uh, surrounding the Donald Trump scandals. Uh, he submitted ostensibly 49 different questions uh, that Donald Trump might have to answer should he submit to actually talking to the special counsel. Um, they ended up in the hands of the New York Times. We're not sure exactly how they got there, who leaked them, how they leaked them. This is kind of a contentious issue. But I'm gonna give you an example, uh, a few examples of the kinds of questions that were asked. Uh, they re uh, revolved around Flynn, Comey, Jeff Sessions, uh, and then also just like a bunch of questions that are on everybody's mind. It really covered everything. On Jeff Sessions, here's a sample of a couple questions. Uh, what did you think and do regarding the recusal of Mr. Sessions? What efforts did you make to try to get him to change his mind? Did you discuss whether Mr. Sessions would protect you and reference past attorneys general uh, on Flynn? The questions were, what did you know about phone calls that Mr. Flynn made with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, in late December, uh, all the way to how was the decision made to fire Flynn on February 13th, 2017? And then just like the stuff you've been wondering about, things like, what was the purpose of your May 2017 tweet? Um, just like a random tweet, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Pick a tweet, they're kind of asking about whether he should be held responsible, it kind of seems, for the things he puts uh, out in social media. And then also things like, what did you mean in your interview with Lester Holt? Uh, what do you guys think about these questions? Was there anything that jumped out to you about the questions or what? No, uh, these are the questions that are, are on everyone's minds who are following uh, this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so nothing jumped out uh, in my mind. I was actually a little bit uh, surprised at, um, or I guess I'm not that surprised at how open-ended the questions are. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what were you thinking? How did you feel? You know, you know, why did you do this? There were no uh, specific questions that required a particular answer. They're all kind of broad-based questions. And uh, to me, uh, that's because, you know, as a prosecutor, you would ask that you would ask, uh, I guess, broad-based questions if you're just kind of fishing or trying to explore as many facts as possible. You're not trying to uh, cross-examine him and nail him to a certain answer necessarily uh, by asking him very direct questions. Let's just try. Yeah, go you ahead. know that that, bring, that that's funny. I never I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. About you're right. How did you feel? What were you thinking? It, it's maybe it's it's like a, a forced therapy session. To, you know, <laughs> like. How do you feel when you're doing those <laughs> tweets? How do you feel about that? That's Wouldn't that be great if like Donald Trump came out and goes, I, was, I, I did the interview and I'm, I'm a changed man. Yeah. I'm gonna stop tweeting. And uh, it was just, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a therapy that session was, in disguise. It was the that moment when Trump started yeah. crying, when yeah. he realized, yeah. oh, I've just been repressing so much. Yeah. Thank you, Robert Mueller. What were you thinking? You know, I you don't know. Out, I was wrong, Robert Mullen. Mueller is a fantastic person, yeah. giant mind. The biggest mind ever, he's wonderful. <laughs> you know what's crazy for me is when I see this, it's crazy because now I guess Trump is saying that it was, that he didn't leak it, that his people didn't leak it and we're trying to figure out who leaked it. It's this rabbit hole that anytime something happens, we just go deeper. Now we're arguing about who leaked the questions. Right. And it's like, listen, the questions are there, and and the only explanation that I've heard so far that makes some sense is that it was, that as people have leaked it, to because they know he watches TV and they're trying to encourage him not to go. Exactly, we have a video of an interview that someone who used to work for Robert Mueller, like who does look like a frightened deer in the headlights, I won't prime you for that, but he is kind of explaining exactly what Maz was referring to. Uh, let's take a look at that video. It would seem to me potentially that the White House Counsel's Office let this float out into the media in an effort to influence the president's thinking about whether or not to do an interview. And I think that they'll gauge reaction of people to these questions and help influence the president to decide whether he should sit down or not sit down. I think that there's a great debate going on within the White House Counsel's Office about this. And I think this may be one way to try to shape the president's thinking about it in addition to the advice that he's getting from his lawyers. Yeah, the previous presidents, you would just sit down with them and say, this is important. Is it that Trump won't take something seriously unless he sees it on television? I, I think that's certainly part of it. I also think that he is, he's, he's not good at taking advice from his people. And the other problem is that he surrounds himself with sycophants who always right. tell, tells him what he wants to hear. If, if you're not a sycophant, then you get fired or you get, you know, 
uh, cast out in some way. Um, but, but you know, on a separate issue, I'm actually not uh, in favor of all of this coverage, to be honest. Why? Um, because when there's an investigation, I want there to be an investigation. And just do the investigation and come back to us when you're done. But the constant speculating by the media and the gossipy, salacious, scandalous nature of it all, to me, is a, is a distraction from a lot of important issues that we should be covering. And now, on top of the distractions, we have a spectacle on top of a spectacle. Because now, as, as Maz pointed out, we have to figure out who leaked it. Was it them? Was it us? You know, what, what was the purpose? So it becomes a circus. And, and when the circus happens, a lot of the important stuff, even this investigation itself, has not taken a back seat to the process of the investigation. But you see, that's what I think he thrives on. Yes. He is P.T. Barnum. Yes. You call it a circus, it is a circus. Yes. I always say he used to have a reality show on one network, now he's got a reality show on every network, right. including us. Everyone's talking about him, right? Before, when he was just The Apprentice, you would tune in on Wednesday, maybe the next day if he says something stupid there, we make fun of it. But now it's 24 seven, and he is a master of doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason he tweets on top of this stuff, we know he's a liar. He, the only way this, this, this actual interrogation, there's two ways interrogation works. One is they trip him up and he just gets really pissed off and just starts, you know, has the, uh, um, uh, with the Jack Nicholson it, right. moment, yeah. right? right? You can't <laughs> handle the truth. If that happens- You're goddamn right I order the code red. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's one way we get The that's other right. way that, that, this, that, that we get him is if he does this interview on a lie detector test, which, by the way, he might pass because he's so good at lying, right. you know, but he's a sociopath. And so it's, uh, it, you're, you're absolutely right. It's a circus and it keeps going. And it's like, you know what? Just zip it up, do the investigation. But then you know what's discouraging is when you find out, because everyone, everyone who, we, we all know he's lied. Mm -hmm. We all know that he knows there was collusion. Of course there was, he knows if every, Manafort, Kushner, uh, you, na you name it, mm -hmm. all around him. They all met with the Russians at some point. So what do you do? Do you just like, when he tweets about this, do you ignore it or do you, like there's this instinct I have no, to it, call him out. Like I have this graphic, like there's a tweet that he, we don't have to go to it, but I have a graphic set up where he's, there's a tweet where he's like, uh, you know, there's collusion that never existed. There's no questions on collusion. And then I had prepared like six questions about collusion, like it's my instinct to say like, all right, Donald Trump, you, you tweeted this. Now the options I have are one, I can just kind of let it go mm -hmm. and just be like, I'm gonna ignore it. And I talk to like psychiatrists who are like, what do you do? He's like, there's, they say, if there's bad behavior, just ignore it and it'll stop. But at the same time, like he still is the president of the United States. He still yeah. has like this major role. Am I gonna just let it go? Or do I have to say, well, there's a question where it says, what do you know about the 27 meeting in the Seychelles with Eric Prince? What do you know about Ukrainian peace, uh, peace proposal on, with Mr. Cohen on 2017? What knowledge did you have of any outreach by your campaign, including Paul Manafort, to Russia about potential assistance to the campaign? Those are explicit questions about collusion because I know on the other side, Trump's fans are all gonna see that tweet and be like, you know what? There was no questions about collusion in there. Oh, there's no question about collusion. Right. I've been in conversations with Trump fans who have said, you know what? There's no question. Like they'll take a bite from a lie he's told and just been like, that's the truth. So, so you're right, Brad. I mean, he is the president of the United States. So you have to cover him. You can't just ignore the guy. And he does foment this kind of energy and, and, and the need for coverage. Um, at the same time, I don't think you're gonna convince anyone who's a Trump supporter that, he should, that they should stop being a supporter because of this investigation or Russia or collusion. Right. They're, they already have their minds made up that these are all lies and they're already on his side. I think the way to get to those Trump supporters is to show them how they have been tricked by Trump into supporting him because everything that he promised them is not coming to fruition. He didn't bring back 100% of the coal mining jobs. He hasn't done any for anything for any of the people that actually voted for him. Even the tax cuts a giant fraud. It goes to all the goes to the, to the to the wealthy. So so I think there are many issues that we can cover and focus on if your goal is to uh, to bring Trump down and convince the supporters to stop supporting him. This is the wrong way to go, I think, because what you're really doing here is dividing people into teams, and they're already on his team. So, the, so they believe his tweets when he says Mueller's a liar, Mueller's in bed with the, with the, with people who are out to get him, and the media is fake. They, they already believe that. So I don't think arguing with them on Twitter and calling them out, as you say, really helps helps that much. But that's my take on it. Uh, listen, I think you both have good points. I think uh, uh, to Brett's point, 
The unfortunate thing is no matter what you say, yeah. his tweet with his followers is gonna take precedence over whatever your arguments are, whatever right. your arguments are, yeah. the whole thing, even, even logic. Mm -hmm. And so two things, first of all, just for your own health, I, I bet you if, if they did an analysis of the level of anxiety in this country, it's skyrocketed since this guy came in because yes. we all, like you just said, when I see a tweet from him, my instinct is this. I'm gonna get what? <laughs> I'm ready to go, man. But I, but I've, I've tried recently to. I got kids, and I go. Sometimes I'm sitting there with my phone, and I'm like, my God, put the phone down and talk to your kids. Like, be in this moment. There's more to life than Donald Trump's tweets. Now that said, you don't ignore it. You wait till either late at night or you've had a couple drinks. And now you go, you go really hardcore at him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, or, or sometimes like, like a tweet will come in my head. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta wake up and send this because it feels so good, right? I mean, it does. I think there's probably some psychological thing to it. The psychological studies I've seen surrounding like, should I vent or should I just ignore it? Right? They are this one: the venting, the initial vent, an occasional vent is good. Yes, it releases. Uh, something that you've kind of been repressing, but a consistent venting uh, kind of reinforces yes. the positive feeling you have after venting, and it makes you want to be more negative on a consistent basis. And the long-term effect of that is it makes you like a depressed, angry person. Not a de clinically depressed, but like it makes you what conventionally you'd say as depressed, but an angrier person. Yeah. Yeah, pulls you deep. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. And, and you know, the thing is, I wish we could have investigations that are actual investigations and not political, politically motivated nonsense uh, investigations. I think this is a real investigation. This is a real one. This is a real yeah. one, right? And, I, and I'm, I'm afraid of this becoming a circus too because all the Benghazi investigations were a joke. It was, I mean, how many investigations so, do we have? 57? What's the right thing to take away from these Mueller questions being leaked, if anything? Well, I, I, I'm, I, I don't want to take take away from the leaking of it, but in terms of the questions themselves, yeah. I, I'm happy that he's asking what appears to be the right questions, in my opinion. So uh, Mueller, go forward, God bless, do your investigation, and let's see what they uncover. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious to see what they uncover. Um, what I don't like is the media circus surrounding the whole process. Right. Yeah, there's a couple, first of, first of all, the fact that, I, one of the questions I think talks about um, believing, he, kept, he keeps saying Putin said there was no Collusion, so I'm gonna believe him over my own intelligence. And so at first you think, oh, maybe it's his ego because he thinks if Putin helped him win, then that means he didn't really win. But you go deeper and you go, no, he definitely knows some things were done. And it's this deny, deny, deny. It reminds me of the Eddie Murphy joke where he goes, when, right. when he gets ca caught, he goes, if your wife catches you having wasn't sex me. with someone else, yeah, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then once you, but here's now, here's where it turns because his followers, I think, even if we, Get stuff that prove that he was guilty. Mm -hmm. They will listen to he. He can he can yeah. you know pivot. So in the in the joke, Eddie Murphy goes, "Yeah, baby, I effed her, but I make love to you." Yeah. <laughs> Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.